and on the Thursday night before the big game, coach Peter Knight spoke with the ABC footy show about their remarkable summer and the challenge ahead. The Brisbane Bears face an enormous task, many believe an impossible one, to measure up in 1987. And the man in football's most tropical seat is first year coach Peter Knights. Peter, welcome. Thanks, Tim. Is it impossible? Oh, no, I um, don't like using that word impossible. It's, it's going to be hard and tough. We all realise that, but certainly not impossible. The Peter, odds are uh, heavily stacked against you, though. Would you concede that much? Oh, yes, I suppose it's been a very tough three months. When I think back to the water that's gone under the bridge in that time, what we have achieved in such a short time, I think, is, is remarkable. And the people in question have done a fantastic job. But, you know, we're first to realise and under no illusion that there's a, a long, long way to go yet. And, you know, we're crawling before we work, but uh, we're certainly looking forward to tomorrow night's game. Pete, you seem to be left almost to boiling your own oil up there. The, the three players that each club was supposed to give you was a farce. Now, transfer fees must have cost you six or seven hundred thousand. The transfer fees in particular seem to me to be pretty tough. There could have been some support given from some rules made here at VFL level. Oh, yes, maybe so, Doug. I, I suppose I've been fortunate in one way. I, I just haven't had the time to devote all my efforts in that area. Uh, Shane O'Sullivan, Ken Murphy, uh, Jim Sewell, those sort of guys have been working extremely hard in that area. And I've just had to concentrate on the, the guys that I've had up there from the start of January, trying to mould them into a combination. And I really haven't had much time to devote to that administrative side. But, you know, Shane especially has just put in so much work there. And, I think you'll find tomorrow night that there's some rewards in, in, as a result. Pete, talking about transfer fees and that 270000 for Brad Hardy made us all gasp, I think. <laughs> but because he was a contract player, did the VFL play a large percentage of it? And is that able to be announced to how much the VFL paid and how much the Bears paid? Well, at this stage, Leo, I, I, th I think not. I suppose, again, it's, that's a question that, uh, that Shane might be in a position to answer a little bit you know, more than me. But, uh, you know, Brad... Brad will be one of the players that we'll be looking for tomorrow night, but no more than, than you know, the other guys in the side. Peter, have you done any background work on the on the travel uh, situation? Because you and uh, the Eagles are going to be doing the most, aren't they, in the country? Yes, I, I think that'll be a part and partial of it. I, we did a, a little bit of an experiment, I suppose, when we went to uh, play the Swans in Sydney. We certainly learned from that that um, you can't just sort of try and get there in a day and, and everything to fall exactly into place. I think you need to have a little bit of time up your sleeve to get back to the state where you're going to play and just you know have 24 hours before you do at least play the game so you can get your feet on the ground and get the cobwebs out of the out of the eyes after the flight but uh, it's something we've got to live with and it's part and partial of what we're going to be about and uh, you know I, I don't see that as being a real problem what what you guys do in the, in the way of coping with it will be followed by the others because mm. th it doesn't seem to be a set pattern amongst any of opinion amongst any of the, the league coaches as to which is the best way to go Yes, I've certainly spoken to a few coaches and they, they do look at it that way and they're 50-50 as to which way they should go. You know, I suppose we all have our different ideas there, but uh, you know, I just feel that no matter whether the flight's one hour, eight hours, two hours, it, it does take a little bit out of the guys and I think it's important that you do get there a little ahead of time so you can just relax and, and as I said, get the cobwebs out. It's a matter of filling in the time, isn't it? Yes, so it is. What, what about... Uh much travel players that you've got in your, in your side, uh, just to, to name a couple, Reigns and Richardson, uh, Walsh? Yes, well, I think, you know, we've got a lot of players that are much travelled. When I think back again to the beginning of January, when we all assembled in Brisbane for the first time, our first training run, we had players that had come from six different states, from different clubs within those states, and, you know, it was a big introduction that first night that took longer than the training session. So... It, it obviously was an enormous task then just to get the guys acclimatised to everything up there, getting to know each other. That was the first step. And then the practice matches again, things that you take for granted, you've got to learn about each other. And because we've had so many players from different clubs and different states, um, it has been probably the biggest challenge of all, just getting that cohesion going, both on the track and, of course, off the track as well. Have you found, Peter, there's a lot more sort of socialising, though, and we talk about them mm. being sort of stuck up in the state not with you know with a lot of sort of family or or that kind of thing up there that uh, the difference between the bear situation and all your years at Hawthorne where players mm. sort of go home and I think that's definitely correct I I knew that we had to get some form of comradeship and mateship existing you know very very quickly or else we would uh, mm. you know fall down and I suppose when I think back to to January especially when it was very very warm up there we had quite a lot of pool parties and I think we all ended up 
finishing in the pool at some time or other during the night. But that was a, an introduction to the type of atmosphere that we had to create. We really had to get mm. to know each other, and, and that's continued on. And uh, it's so important that, that that did take place. Pete, thanks for joining us. Thank um, you. I suppose I'd just like to ask you before you go about the fact that a lot of coaches have picked their mark and gone to a club that they feel they might be able to be successful at. Um, you've really jumped off the deep end. Have you done that, though, to a certain extent? I mean, do you feel you can be successful there? Oh, sure. I, I feel that, uh, as everyone does, that it was an enormous challenge and I, I realise that the responsibility is there. But uh, I also look at it as being an exciting venture and something that that is, is going to go down in the history books forever and a day and to be a part of this, this initial onslaught, if you'd like, uh, you know, I'm very excited about it. But as I said, I'm first to realise that there's a, a lot of work in front of us and we all know that. And uh, if we all get in there and, and do it together and not try and do it as, as individuals, I'm quite certain you'll see the results will come. Good luck. I'm sure no one will begrudge your success when it comes your way. Thank you. Well, it loomed as an enormous task for the Bears. North Melbourne first up at the MCG. The Roos having finished fourth and seventh in the previous two seasons and once again expected to be a September contender in 1987. After the break, we'll take a look at what the experts had to say ahead of Brisbane's first VFL match and then we'll take a look at the highlights from that historic Friday night in round one of 1987. That's all still to come in our special feature on the birth of the Brisbane Bears right here on Footy Flashbacks. Now it's the pocket and look. Welcome back to Footy Flashbacks and our special feature on the birth of the Brisbane Bears over the summer of 1986-87. It had been a massive summer for the Brisbane administration, led by coach Peter Knights, football manager Shane O'Sullivan and chairman Paul Cronin. They'd worked practically non-stop around the clock to put together a playing list, then secure and upgrade a playing facility, settling temporarily for Carrara on the Gold Coast rather than in Brisbane proper, after plans to base themselves in Kedron and Boondall fell over. They'd found a major financial backer in Christopher Scase, and spent the summer finding houses to live in, relocating their families and finding part or full-time jobs to supplement their playing income. Now somewhere in between, they also had to find the time to bond as a playing group, develop and learn a game plan and settle an on-field structure to challenge the very best football clubs in the country. Their first up assignment in 1987 saw them pitted against North Melbourne in the Friday night season opener at the MCG, a ground which many of the Bears players had never even set foot in before. They'd been harshly labelled the Bad News Bears by the Melbourne media. A hodgepodge collection of cast-offs and rejects from other clubs amidst untried interstate players and unknown draftees. Needless to say, the Melbourne football establishment were less than impressed with their chances of rolling the ruse. Here's how the ABC Thursday Night Footy Show previewed the historic Round 1 clash. Well, now let's start talking about the football matches to be played over the next three days. And it kicks off tomorrow night at the MCG with North Melbourne going in against the Brisbane Bears. North Melbourne with three new players in their lineup: John Mossop from Geelong, McRae from Sandgate in Queensland, and Dale Holmes up from the under-19s. And the Brisbane Bears, well, they've got heaps of new players. Ron Barassi, have they got a chance? Well, uh, <laughs> Peter's alongside me here, but I'm not scared because <laughs> you uh, are separating us too. Big strong now, man I, that I, I am. I don't really uh, think that the Bears uh, do have a chance. Uh, what will happen during the season, I'll gradually uh, coalise their spirit and be a very f forceful team and really be competitive because they're up there all alone. And we saw that happen with the Sydney Swans well before last year. I mean, they, were, they haven't improved uh, at, at all the Sydney Swans in spirit. How they've improved is in talent. And that's, of course, where the Bears uh, uh, will be let down at this stage because I just don't feel that they've been able to recruit uh, anyone more than uh, players who are struggling for a place in the side, with the exception of you know guys like uh, Hardy and Donnell, of course. But... Uh, I just don't think Pete's got the players at the stage. I'd and love North, to see them win, though. North to open with a win. I think North will open with a, a win. They're going to miss uh, Pete Cracker, of course, uh, but they just got uh, too much experience and too much right. pace, I would think. Jim Cracker in, Phil Cracker out at North Melbourne. Well, it was billed as one of the great mismatches in the history of the game. The talent-laden Kangaroos against the Bad News Bears in the 1987 season opener at the MCG. As the experts put it, they will bond eventually, but not in time for this game, surely.